Learntofly.ca and Learntofly.tv. Everybody, it's Jeff McKay from LearnToFly.ca. I'm here with Captain Brett Parker, standing in front of Snowbird Number no. Five. What Absolutely, a beautiful airplane. The Tudors, right? Yes, Tudor it is. Jet? Yep. So, can you tell me a little bit about the Tudor jet? Well, its uh, its designation is a CL41 Tudor Canadair. is built by Canadair. Uh, we took delivery of them back in uh, back in the late 60s. As a training jet, right? As a training jet. Yep. It was used in uh, we we used the Tudor up until about uh, 2000 uh, yep. at, at our main training base, which is in uh, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Uh, up until 2000, we had uh, over 100 Tudors there that yep. uh, were basically used for pilot training in the military. And then uh, 2000, uh, we had a new program get implemented where the tutor got phased out of the pilot training, but uh, the Snowbird team, uh, 431 Air Demonstration Squadron, uh, continued to use the jet because it is what it is. It's, it's great. great at, it's great, it's great at doing jet, air shows. So why why take it out of a good thing? Yeah. So how many hours do you have in type? Uh, on the jet itself, I have about 650 hours on the Tudor, uh, and I'm uh, close to almost 3,000 hours total time. It's a dream come true for me. It's something I'd always want to do since I was uh, since I was a kid. I I drag my parents to air shows and yeah. uh, to come watch the, both the team and the F-18. Yeah, you mentioned the, the CF-18. I understand from Paco that the CF-18 has more thrust than all the Snowbirds combined. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? We have smoke. Which is so pretty that's cool. That's what makes the, the Snowbird better, the Tudor jet better than the CF-18. We right? have we have nine lines of smoke, and that's okay, pretty cool. Yeah. And you guys do some uh, some amazing uh, aerobatics. We do. We do full up aerobatics, loops, rolls, clovers. We fly upside down. Uh, How many G's is guy rated for? Like plus minus? Uh, we can pull up to seven G's in yeah. the Tudor and uh, back to minus three uh, for the negative end. And another hit against the Hornet. Uh, you know those guys wear G pants and we don't. So uh, you know we're we're kind of animals in this airplane. It is what it is. And you have a G meter inside. So we do. Yeah, we have a G meter G inside. It's right at the top there. The little rondel. It'll tell you tell you how much G you're pulling. So. And how about specs on the airplane itself? Like, what's the VNE on it? What's your uh, basically speed? with the tanks on? We can fly uh, 400 knots. Is sort of our top speed. Um, stall speed. Uh, you know, it's it's similar to actually to a lot of just uh, regular uh, civil aviation. You know, we'll, it stalls are roughly about uh, 65 to 70 knots. That would be full flap configured type of thing if yeah. you're going to do a full full landing attitude stall. Uh, approach speeds uh, we're uh, roughly about 115 knots in the flare will slow down to about 95 so it's not it's not crazy fast it's certainly not as fast as the f-18 so yep. it, uh, it and it handles really well like it was built as a training jet and it does that really well so it's very forgiving and that's why it's great for both the roles that we use it for and you take off with flaps without flaps we take off with half flop half yeah flap. so we have half flop for takeoff and then when we land we've got full flop and the speed breaks out okay I'll take you on uh, kind of my standard walk around. I'll point out some things on the aircraft, more specific to the Tudor. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, let sure. me know. Okay, so pretty standard stuff here on the front. As we come along to the front, uh, probably the biggest thing that most people see with the Tudor is the light, you know, the nine twinkling lights of the oh, yeah, team. Yeah. So that's the nice bright light in the front there. Um, yeah, I really do see that too. Right? And you like see that, yeah. Formation flying and what have you, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So it shows up really well. Uh, if that doesn't work, sometimes we'll have a light that burns out. We do also have uh, lights in the winglets there where the black, see where that black piece is? There's also the landing lights in there as well. So sometimes if you see the head-on shot, you'll see two lights. That's what's lit up on either side. Over around, uh, we have a uh, nose wheel steering. So a lot of aircraft have uh, nose wheel steering. It's engaged on the stick, so it allows the uh, nose to caster back and forth so we can steer on the ground. A typical rudder pedals that you'd have? Rudder pedals, you betcha. So you engage it, and there's actually little scissors on the back part of the wheel that engage. Yep. And you hold the button in on the stick, and then when you move the rudder pedals, it turns the wheel for you. So you just... And then toe brakes, they got a... Standard toe brakes, oh, you betcha. Coming along this side, uh, so we got an intake on either side. A lot of people think that there's two engines. So there's only one engine, so one J85, oh, yeah. one J85 engine. Uh, the aircraft is similar to the T37 Tweet, which yep. is what the US Air Force uses, but the Tweet actually has two engines in it. It's got two small little engines. The J85 is a single engine, so and this has got one J85 single engine. It actually has more power than the T37, so. Uh, so that's the intake. Average show, we will burn about, uh, about 2,000 to 2,200 pounds an hour. That's a lot, wow. And we'll, we carry only 2,000 pounds, so it's less than an hour's worth of gas. 
So that's why our show is back there. Exactly. So on the bottom there, we'll see. I'll show you some more of it. On the bottom, we've got uh, two uh, two tanks. A lot of people think that's for fuel. It's not. It's actually uh, we carry a diesel in there. And it's the diesel that actually is what produces our smoke. And I'll oh, show you when we get to the back of the jet where the diesel comes out to make the it's smoke. it's heated up and it increases Exactly. Smoke. It gets basically thrown into the hot exhaust. Yeah. Along the bottom there, obviously, just standard uh, wheels. Yep. Of course. We have 18 starting up, right? Of course. So just standard wheel brakes that we have here coming along. It's our stall okay, warning yep. system. So uh, this is actually tied to our stick. So that when this start, we start to, the, the stick brake. will start to vibrate. Yeah. That means we're within 10% of our stalling speed. So it's a bit of a heads up that you're starting to get slow. And this so when you is get like, that shake, you want to put a nose down. Yeah, you got to release, you betcha. Or at power. Yep, one of the two, usually both. Uh, standard on an aircraft, a pitot tube. Yeah, so uh, great way to stab somebody. It is heated though. We have a heating system to keep it heated for flight and cloud to make sure that all of our instruments ice build up plugging it and uh... Exactly. Along the side, standard navigation lights. This is our uh, obviously our aileron like any other aircraft. And we were mentioning about the, the CF-18. The CF-18 has a fly-by-wire. Uh, the Tudor does not. It's all still the old pulleys and rods. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's literally there's no computer telling you like basically telling the aircraft how to deflect the controls like the F-18. It's basically you turn, you know, you move the stick and then the pulley and a par rod will move and then that makes the aileron move up or down. And so, But it's got great feel. It's a fantastic aircraft for that. So a lot of work in this one. Yeah. Yeah. So trim tabs, these are trim tabs, standard trim to be able to make the aircraft fly straight. You know, it'll, it'll adjust up and down. Our flaps, yep. we have three, uh, well, three flap selections, I guess, up. Half and full. Down on the back side, the saber vent. That's just uh, overflow for our um, from our uh, tank. So we may okay, get yep. some fuel coming out the bottom of our saber tank. Along the back, speed brakes. One on each side. But they, they fold out and they open up like that. Uh, so for you, it'd be the other way. Yeah. So so they come out like that. They're extremely effective. Yep. Really effective. Uh, so they're uh, we use them a lot during the show. I've seen them under, I've actually seen them quite a few times. Yep. Back onto the back part. So we got our standard tailplane with our elevator. Our rudder, really good sized rudder. We have awesome uh, rudder authority in this aircraft. And we use a rudder a lot for our flying. Because if you can imagine, when we're formation flying, when you use an aileron, you get a lot of what we call wing chatter, and it makes it difficult for a guy outboard of you to be able to fly well. So we'll use the rudder a lot and use yaw and yaw the aircraft in and out, but keep the wings flat. And in and we basically we want to wing match the boss all the time. And we use rudder to control our spacing so that guys flying around you aren't seeing crazy amounts of wing mismatch, which makes it difficult to fly off them. So this is huge for us on the Tudor. And typically when you use ailerons, then you get the adverse yaw and then use the rudder to offset the adverse yaw. Exactly. So you have like your um, turn coordinator, your simple ball inside of a Yes, we do. You betcha. Yeah. And you step on the ball. Or... We do step on the ball, but there's actually uh, certain guys will actually purposely cross control yep. in order to stay in position. So for myself, I'm a line of stern. I'm a second line of stern. So imagine when the boss is turning, he set a bank angle and the aircraft is in a certain controlled set, like in a controlled turn, right? Right. So if I do the same thing with my aircraft, the tendency is for my aircraft to actually slide to the inside yeah. just by physics. So what I end up doing is I actually use top rudder and I'll actually use top rudder, outside rudder, and I'll, we'll, we'll I'll do it a pendulum. We call yeah. it a pendulum. So I'll actually pendulum the jet outside to basically make everybody along the same line okay, if that makes yeah, sense yeah, i got you yeah. so i'm actually cross controlling so if you're looking in the cockpit you actually see the ball would be over to well, the yeah, left telling me to actually yeah. push the left rudder but i'm purposely hitting the right rudder on purpose yeah. to make the to make it look the way that we want so your, I've, your diesel probably comes out here right you betcha you so yeah there's our exhaust and then this is the two exhaust if you look on the bottom there, you got the two lines. There's two lines that go up to each tank. Oh yes, yep. So inside the cockpit, we have a selector switch for left tank or right tank. And then that activates either one of the two nozzles. So we arm, there's an arming switch. So we arm it up. So that basically uh, pressurizes the line with diesel. 
and then the trigger so you know your trigger down like on the heavy you go shoot the gun smoke on. when we shoot the gun we smoke we smoke yeah. so we shoot the gun this will throw diesel out into this hot hot mist and that's what causes the uh, smoke to come out it the back nice effect. better than what the f-18 can do right than what we said yeah he's got more thrust but we got smoke and then uh, back on the other side again very similar you know it's it's pretty well uh, symmetrical so yeah. speed brake on the other side uh, again another flap another railer on and back around so pretty simple pretty straightforward great and you can show us inside the cockpit now absolutely when i look inside okay let's go hop inside we're in the tutor now as you can see it's uh it's pretty basic uh, a lot of the instruments are pretty well the same as when it came out back in the late 60s. We got our standard stuff. We have an attitude indicator, kind of our, our T, perfect T if you will. So attitude indicators in the middle. Then we got our altimeter on the right, our speedometer on the left. We got our uh, DRMI over here in the middle, vertical speed indicator. And then we also have our track indicator for when we're shooting approaches. We've got a turn and slip, a clock and a Mach meter, which is kind of fun, which doesn't really work that much because we're not really that fast, but it's there anyway, so we feel like we're fast. Uh, working over here, just our standard instrument gauges. We have our uh, enunciator panel, which alerts us to any kind of emergency if we have one. Uh, over here, uh, basically again, just some basic switches that uh, most of them we don't really use that often. Uh, we're talking about the pedo heat, that's like our pedo heat switch, for example. Down working over here, we've got our, uh, our VHF, and also our nav, our uh, comm, sorry, our VHF comms, and then our navigation unit for uh, tracking to a VOR or an ILS. Down over here is to start the engine, our inverters for our electrics, our TACAN, an ADF, or NDB, if uh, someone's wondering what that is. Along the middle column here, we've got our UHF uh, radio, and then we've got all of our volume controls. These are for our radios. We have a transponder. And then we have some light switches to be able to run the jet at nighttime if we need to. An air conditioning set. And then obviously our standard circuit breaker panel for most of our systems. The main things that we use are obviously the stick and the throttle. Probably a lot of people have heard of like hands on throttle and stick. Uh, HOTAS, which is similar to the F-18, but it's not quite as complicated uh, because we just don't run any of those complicated systems like a radar or weapons or anything like that but we still have most of our controls are on the throttle and stick so on the stick itself like i talked about on the front of where our trigger switch is that's to activate the smoke on the top our hat here is for our trim that activates the elevator trim so that we have nice coordinated flight we have a uh, a trim a trim interrupt switch for an emergency, if, if for whatever reason we get like a runaway trim scenario or for whatever reason the uh, the motor runs full nose down trim and the stick gets really heavy, we can basically deactivate it. And then we've got an, a backup trim set of switches over here on the left side, where we actually you can see it here. You can see the alternate trim. We lift the hat up and then we can adjust the trim as required in an emergency. This is our VHF. This is how we talk on VHF, so that radio. And then on the front, we have a button that we push that activates the nose wheel steering, which I chatted about. We have to push the button in and then use the rudders to steer. And that's what's on the stick. On the throttle, on the throttle, there's two throttles, one on each side. So we've got our mic. This is what we talk on mainly. This is our UHF button, so we push to talk. On the top, this is for our speed brakes. So you can see there's an in and there's an out and then there's an off. So we're usually either flying with them most of the time either in or they're out. On the top here we have our air start switch. So in our engine we've got uh, basically the engine fires up with igniters. So the igniters basically are kind of like that flint that fires off and then we throw raw fuel onto those sparks and that's what basically lights off the engine. The air start is there in the event that we have like a flame out we'll bash the igniters so we'll bash the air start, which will fire the igniters and hopefully there'll be some fuel in there that will cause a relight and be able to catch the engine before it completely, uh, before it completely fails. And that's really about it. So as you can see, most of the stuff while we're flying is located on the throttle and the stick. So it is kind of HOTAS-like when we're flying in our, in our, in our show. Is it IFR equipped for ILS or IFR? Absolutely, it is IFR equipped. So we can fly an ILS off of here. 
We can fly TACAN off of here. We have an NDB here. The only thing we don't have is GPS, which is, you know, kind of the new cutting edge thing. We don't have the ability to actually shoot an RNAV approach. We do carry a handheld GPS for just basic navigations, but legally we're not allowed to shoot approaches with it. So we still end up resorting back to uh, the basic ones, uh, basic like VOR, ILS, uh, PAR, that kind of stuff. And then do you wear a parachute when you're performing? Or? Yes, we do. All the, all the time you're performing? Always. We always wear a parachute. So these are two, uh, these are two uh, ejection seats. They're, they're, they're ROCAD ejection seats, basically designed for the tutor. They have a, uh, basically the speed limitation for it is 60 knots up to 350 knots. And the altitude is also the same, it's up to 60 feet. So they're not a zero zero C like the F-18. So you have to at least have some altitude and a little bit of smash. Um, but they have been advanced quite a bit. I'll show you. On the back here, uh, we've added uh, an ARAD, an ARAD, it's called an ARAD, which is an Aero Rigid Arm Drogue. What it does is it actually assists in getting a seat man separation. When, this, when the seat was initially designed, they had a problem with the seat tumbling and not stabilizing. So what happens is when the seat is ejected, it goes out and this, this drogue comes out and it basically stabilizes the seat in one direction, which allows for the next sequence, which would be the seat man separation, which gets you separated from the seat and allow you to get under your parachute. So there's no shoot, is there a shoot on the actual seat or just on No, the so this is the chute itself right here. So we have to manually wear the chute all the time. So we have a chute and then we have, when we have over water shows, we also have an LPSV, so life preserver safety vest. And we have a GoPro camera we're gonna be mounting hopefully in a few minutes or getting inside the cockpit.
Learn to Fly.ca and Learn to Fly.tv.